the last show of 2021. Allow me to be frank. And everything's getting canceled. Everything's being uh, affected by the fucking COVID, which never goes away. You know? And most people are really just getting feeling like they have the common cold. Do you know the common cold is a coronavirus? No, I didn't know that. Really? Yes. Uh, explain. I, I got I to gotta hear this one. I haven't even heard this one yet. Uh, it's already a, it's already a, uh, the cold already is already part of the coronavirus. Yeah, the the, the 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 common cold is part of the corona family. Dude, so don't let anybody else know that because we'll be locked down forever. I mean, we were, already are. It was what fifteen days to slow the curve, and I think we're two and a half years into it now. I I mean, uh, what COVID nineteen was. When this first thing started, well, it was a, something bad. It was, right. and people scary. were dying. It was scary. But now we're, we got people taking the vaccines. Right. And, and most people who get it now are getting mild symptoms. That's why now they're starting to recommend uh, your isolation period going from 10 days to five days. Yeah. They wouldn't, uh, and, 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 and you have some people who are just so scared going, this is only being done to protect the economy. We don't need, right. but, you know, I, I need the government to tell me to wear a mask while I'm driving alone, and I need a double mask while I drive alone. Did you see that one guy? He was reporting every single person on the airline that wasn't wearing a mask. He was tagging people, uh, uh, tagging Twitter. Uh, in the CDC, like I cannot believe that these people are flying an airplane without a mask. They're sitting in the in the terminal without a mask. I'm like, dude, just relax. It's not that big of. I, I mean, I, teach their own. Teach their own. I don't know. Uh, these people you know, are like, oh, crazy. Uh, those are the people who really make life miserable. And these you know what? Who... It's sad because, like, dude, we're we're saying this right now, and guess what? We are on the verge of getting canceled just because we're saying this. You know, it just it is what it is. But you know, you know, it's like nobody is allowed to have any different differentiating point of view. No, no, absolutely. Not. And, and, and uh, now, uh, now, don't get me wrong. There have been people who died from Corona. Right. And, and, and the vaccine whole debate has become just totally ridiculous. Yeah, the, the the debate has been become that's that's become a little silly. Uh, a lot of people are like either do or die with it, but just the whole the whole situation of how it just turned into a whole political mess is just it, it's crazy. And and, and well, uh, Alex, Alex Jones, who's just I mean, you want to talk about someone? Uh, I, I literally think he wakes up his 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 ringtone is the uh, the, the Looney Tunes. I, I, I mean, and oh, he, it's gotta be. He's a he's a he's a Looney Tune for sure. I, I mean, fun. I mean, he does have some points, but he just is, is just so so far off the reservation. It's 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 any point that he has, you just got to question if you agree with it because he's just. Oh yeah, yeah, because it spins. It's been so far, and you know what? That's the thing is, like, people get so woke that they go crazy, right? They get they go get so woke they get schizophrenic. I think Alex Jones on the other end of the spectrum is on a different kind of woke. Where he's going crazy as well, so like I feel like there's got to be some kind of happy balance. And oh, there there isn't, there isn't. It, nope, it, it, never it, is. It, I mean, we just we we really have become like uh, like uh, just like just like 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 rabble, 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 rabble. Exactly. I, I mean, I mean, uh, Donald Trump actually came out last week saying that he got the booster, and yeah, basically like, says yeah, that, I support it. That's what he was saying. And then Alex Jones says, Donald Trump is a traitor! <laughs> the guy, that's the guy who created the vaccine. And that's my favorite part is people that like hate the guy, want are forcing the vaccine. People that love the guy, don't want the vaccine. It's like you guys realize last week the guy came out and was like, yo, I, I kind of created the vaccine. But who knows? Yeah, I think yeah, it's just... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah well, that's the, the, the craziest thing is the people who... Uh, are like these uh, the the people who are like the uh, vaccine deniers, the people who refuse to take it, 
tend to be the Donald Trump supporting type of group. Right. Right. And Donald Trump is the one who basically created it. Fast tra- fast tracked the vaccine. Literally. Well, well, the Democrat. What's funny is if it was Donald Trump in the White House still, and he was encouraging people to take the vaccine, the people who now are f- against the vaccine would be lining up out the door to take the vaccine. And the people who are saying, take the vaccine, would question the vaccine. That Absolutely. is how fucked up this country is right now. They they made it so polarizing that you're literally cheering for it. it it's, it's, they literally took fandom, like actual sports fandom, and turned it into politics where <sighs> people are actually rooting for their team even when they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's... Whatever. What do I know? I don't know. Uh, uh, it, it, all I know is this. I just want whatever gives us the most freedom. Yeah. I mean, I, I've gotten the booster shot. I've been boosted. Well, I heard a little bit of uh, you and Doug's mm-hmm. talking this morning on uh, the Units podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, New Jersey it, or Newark is, is getting strict with the mandates, too. Or yeah. even you you guys need to wear a mask. You need need to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. Everybody needs to wear the mask at the Devils game. Yeah. And they just put that requirement for the Bulls, because I'm a season ticket holder as well. They just put that in for January 3rd, where you need your mask on and you need your vaccine by January 3rd. So it's just, whatever, it's fine. It's just people are... Uh, and 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 I, and, I, and I'll say this: I the only reason I got vaccinated was to attend sporting events. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Oh, I mean, I mean, it, if I die, then I'll come back and I'll haunt their ass. I'll turn into a poltergeist. There you go. Yeah. Now, all right. Let me ask you this: If you were a poltergeist, which sports team would you haunt first? So many to haunt. Give me your top three. Uh, Patriots. Patriots, okay. Lakers. Yeah, I I can't stand the Lakers post LeBron era. And the Yankees. Oh uh, yeah, the Yankees for sure. For because sure. because it'd be, because it would be just so so much fun to fuck with the Yankees. You know, the ghost of Frank the Tank would definitely be like the Billy Goat curse for Chicago. Yeah, that I think that we could turn that into definitely a story. If uh, if now yeah. I, I would I would I would I would say the Rangers and Flyers, but you know they're already fucked. There's already ghost haunting those those two teams. Yeah, why why kick a person or kick a team when they're down? You know. Speaking of uh, kicking teams when they're down, though. Uh, uh, speaking of COVID too, just uh, the whole Arizona Bowl got canceled. That's uh, that sucks. Awful. Yeah. The, you know, I uh, you know, uh, I just broke the little uh, piece that protected it, but I got a nice little. I I brought this for ten dollars to practice flipping a coin because I was going to flip the fucking coin at the Arizona Bowl. Are you kidding me? Damn, that's so annoying. You know, that would have been, it's just, and then you had people on, we'll get back to it, but you had people online, like, who was that name, Johnny Mangiano or something, was just like, oh, yeah, uh, good. Dude, yeah, yeah a, a weekend sports anchor at some, like, Rinky Dinks channel, like, what, would, I mean, you're a weekend sports anchor, I mean, what do you do the rest of the week, you stock groceries? Literally. Weekend sports anchor! You're not good enough to be the regular sports anchor. So you only do it on the weekends when nobody's watching. Literally, when nobody's, when everybody's out, go ahead and uh, go ahead and practice. I don't know that they, like people like that, and then he's like, "I mistake." That's the most fame that that guy has had, you know. And he took it into a negative light, and he probably would beg to get a job at Barstool, but he's out here rooting for the the the, the place to to fail, which is so hypocritical. Like if you know they're they're. I mean, would, uh, how, many, how many bowl games have been canceled? It's been like four or five bowl games canceled. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 I would say there's too many bowl games. I would be, but you know what? 
if they're scheduled and to be played, I mean, let's play them. You know, it's just uh, this this fucking uh, the Omicron variant, which looks like it's it really is just minor, minor. And they were trying to say that it was ten times worse two weeks ago. No, it's well, ten how- times. It's ten times more contagious. Oh, ten times more contagious. Okay. But what happens with a virus is sometimes when the more contagious it gets, the, weaker the less, it gets. the weaker it gets. So, so essentially, like, yeah, like a scorpion so, tail. Yeah. So essentially. Whatever the Omicron virus is, the Omicron variant is, it, there's some people who get the sniffles. They might get a cough. And the only people who are getting hospitalized are people who aren't vaccinated. Again, get the vaccine. Right. It, or, if, or if you have, like, uh, other underlying conditions. And I think there's been, like, one death, I heard. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah, I heard. I heard that there was one death, like in Texas or something like that. It, of course, the news brings it up. But if there was, if people were dying, that would be the lead story in the de- in the news. The yeah, fact that absolutely. you're not hearing the death rate, that nobody's talking about the death rate. Right. Yeah. Because, 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 the, because the news media, they they, they literally lead. With bad news, because they want they want they want to constantly say the fear. Right, it's a fear thing. Like, I I don't know. To me, it's what else can? How long can they drag this thing out? There's going to be another variant, and it's going to be weaker and weaker and weaker until. What do we do? Like, what are we just supposed to keep living and, here and hide in our in our and, houses until we die? And like that's it. what we that that is actually what we should be rooting for, is for every variant that comes. Yeah. To be weaker. Yeah, that, literally. That's, Get it more contagious and, and have it be a little bit weaker and weaker until it fades away. That, into our that is why. Life. That is why we get vaccinated. Right. Literally. Because you get vaccinated, and these weaker variants come in there. Your body is just ready and just just uh, fuck. Yeah, like like flicking flicking off little uh, mosquitoes. Ding. That's why we get vaccinated. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I, I mean, we don't get vaccinated just just because the government tells us to. Although I think there are some people that do. I think I think that uh, there's a lot of reasons why people get vaccinated, and I think that there's a a, a good majority that get vaccinated because the government tells them they have to, which is it is what it is. But but this is what this is how it works. I mean, I'm, and and the, and the media and nobody explains that to people. Yeah, no, they never. Yeah, exactly. They just do, 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 do. Why? No answer. It just you better. Uh, do. No I I mean, I mean, uh, people are acting like the Omicron variant is like the holding starting up again, and we shouldn't be acting like that. We should be looking at it and says, oh, this is weaker. Well, and everybody's mad at Adam Silver. I don't know if you saw that, where Adam Silver is refusing to shut down the, the league. He's like, no, we can play through it. I mean, what are we going to do? Obviously, the main reason there is there, 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 there are people but, who are literally rooting for shutdowns, and and those people fucking suck. Those are losers. They don't know what we've been through. Like as a sport, And those aren't sports fans. You know, no sports fan is rooting for... If you're a real sports fan, you're not rooting for a shutout or a shutout. I think, uh, well, I think Keith Oberman is. But then again, I think Keith Oberman, I think Keith Oberman's main job is now just to just, just yell people, yell at people on on Twitter, get off my lawn. Yeah, literally. I think uh, I think he blocked me. I gotta double check that one. But I think he blocked me. I forgot. Who knows? Uh, um, I, I mean, I mean, he's he, you want to talk about someone who serves no purpose anymore? He fell off the wagon. That I mean, he, him and Dan Patrick used to be the funniest people on ESPN. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and, he's he's pretty funny. Well, uh, he is now? uh mm, a good question with uh, NBC Sportsnet shutting down. I know he yeah. has his uh, I know he has his uh, Dan Patrick show, 
which was used to be simulcast on NBC Sports Network. And he did some things for NBC, but I haven't seen him in a while. Okay. He might pop up during the Olympics. You might see him here and there. Yeah, probably. So speaking of popping up, there you go. You know, it pops up all the time, don't you? No, hot we'll dogs. Pop hot dogs. Hot dogs. And uh, America's first and original hot dog company is Feltman's. Because Charles Feltman invented the hot dog. Now Feltman's is a veteran-owned business, which is revived in 2015 by a pair of Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael. And they did it in honor of their late brother Jimmy, who was killed in the September 11th attacks. You know, with a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months in combat. Feltman's is now one of the fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. Their 100% all beef, all natural, all hot dogs are available for purchase online at Feltman's.us and at Whole Foods. And not to mention, they ship super fast and will be the perfect addition to your next family cookout or any meal that you have. So remember to use the promo code FRANK to receive 10% off all Feltman products at Feltman's.us. That's the promo code FRANK for 10% off all items. That includes bratwurst, the bacon, and the hot dogs at Feltman's.us. And allow me to be frank, is presented to you by Feltman's. That's right. Uh, and you know what? I was going to follow up and ask you um, because you were supposed to be going to Arizona this week. But now that you're not, we'll see what you're doing otherwise. But I was going to say, this gives you a whole opportunity for more hot dog reviews. And I was going to see if you were looking up any hot dog reviews in Arizona. To try uh, well, I, w- I was going to go uh, do at least one review in Arizona. I don't know where I was going to go, but, you know, I would have figured it out. I know there's a couple places all around Arizona. Yeah. I would love to. Uh, I, you know, I hope to get to Arizona again, uh, eventually. Yeah. I, I think we're going there. Uh, I think I'm going there for a Bulls game in March. I got to figure out when we're going out there. Uh, whenever the Bulls play the Suns. So that'll be a good time. But yeah, so what did it affect? Like, did you, how, how did it work where you guys had to cancel all your flights? You guys had to do all that stuff. Um, just a mess. It was like two days notice, right? That you guys it just canceled? Uh, for me, it was less than 12 hours notice. I wow. had, I had already checked in on my flight. I had already oh, packed. Wow. And uh, the cancellation came at eight o'clock at night. And I was, uh, my flight was uh, 7 o'clock uh, Tuesday morning. Less than 12 hours. Holy shit. That's awful. That's so, so I was, awful. so I was all ready to go. I still would have never... could have enjoyed some, uh, some nice. Oh, well, well, they, they, well, they canceled all the flights, so uh, I couldn't go. But so... uh, I, I've never been to, I've never been to Arizona. I, I'm trying to get to every state. Uh, you know, uh, 2021 was a year where I saw a lot of states I've never been to. I, yeah. I, I went to Florida for the first time. Uh, I think I'm going to become a regular visitor to Florida. I've been to, I went to Georgia the first time, the Carolinas. Uh, didn't do much in South Carolina, uh, except uh, drop off a little package, if you know what I mean. No, uh, I don't know what you mean. What does that mean, Frank? Well, uh, I had to use the bathroom in South Carolina. I didn't do. Oh, I, think I, was, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> nothing else I had to do in South Carolina. Maybe I'll do something more later. I had a, I did a hot dog review in North Carolina. Okay. Uh, where, where did you go in North Carolina for a hot dog review? A uh, place that uh, the, the, the episode is not out yet. It's called. Went okay. to a place called. Went to a place called Kermit's, if I can recall. I think that was the name of it. Okay, we'll let the listeners wait for the review then. Yeah, but it was it, it was in Winston Salem. Uh, went to Virginia. Uh, went in, uh, so those are states I've never been to before. Of course, I went to a couple of rough and rowdy. So that was my first trip to West Virginia. Yep. Never been. I had never been to Ohio. Uh, went to I went to a terrible place in Akron. Uh, really, uh, really, just not a good place to raw dog. Uh, went to, went through Indiana. Of course, I saw the Hall of Fame, the Canton Hall of Fame, yep. on the way home. Uh, went to Chicago for the first time. Went to Illinois. Went to Michigan for the first time. 
Uh, went up into Vermont for the first time. Went to Rhode Island for the first time this year. So these are all states I've never been to before, and I want to add more states next year. So I feel like you hit the, uh, a lot of the East Coast and then the Midwest. So you definitely have to go travel West Coast soon. Mm. Yeah. You ever, yeah. Have you ever been to Texas? Uh, I don't count it. I was at the Texas airport once. Oh, you got to check out Texas in uh, in Austin. Austin and Houston are beautiful. I, I love Austin and Houston. Now, I the, the, the only Western states I've been to, uh, well, I was born in Montana. I've been to Idaho. I've been to Wyoming. And I've been to Colorado. You've been to Colorado. Okay, cool. Yeah, my mom lives out in Colorado. I love Colorado. It's so nice. Uh, did you like Montana? Uh, I went there once after, okay. uh, like, in 1992. <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't much different than uh, Idaho from what I saw. Oh, so you have you seen uh, Yellowstone yet? Oh, yes, I have. How do you like being at Yellowstone? Uh, it's all right. Uh, my parents actually live... Uh, in the part of Idaho that's like uh, 90 miles away from Yellowstone. Oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. What do you mean it's all right? I think it's one of the top shows I've ever seen. Oh, that that show? I've never actually seen the show Yellowstone. I thought you talking about Yellowstone Na- National no, Park. No, no. <laughs> no. Dude, you got to check out that show. If you, Because if we always talk about Sopranos, we always talk about good shows, but that's up there. That's like Probably top five right now. I'm on uh, season three, and I started a month ago, less than a month ago. Yeah, well, I have to see a lot of shows. I, I, I uh, you know, there's a lot of shows I've never actually seen. Maybe I'll, I'll start, uh, start something like that. I got Doug's uh, hooked on uh, The Sopranos. That's what you said last. What episode is he on now? Do you know? Uh, when he gets back, he's going down to Florida. I think he's gonna try to sell his car down there. Or he's had some car troubles. Really bad car troubles. Uh, he's going to go there for the new year, watch the Gator Bowl, and then come back. I don't know if he's going to bring his car back, but he can drive my car whenever he needs it. And you have the uh, nice uh, 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe, right? Yes. What we were talking about last week. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. Like those yeah. How old is uh, How old is Doug's Tahoe? It's uh. He's had that thing for a while, though, right? Yeah, it's about 10 years old, 10, 12 years old. Yeah, time for him to get a new one. He deserves it. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but, yeah, yeah that, there's a lot of shows i got to catch up on. Uh, I mean, but, you know, that's how it, it, it goes. When you watch a lot of sporting events, you don't really always necessarily have time for uh, a lot of these shows. Well, lately, for me as a Bears fan, I've literally just been turning it off during halftime and then going to watch Yellowstone. So. They won this week, actually, so you can't really talk bad about them. But we're playing the Giants this week, so I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, Mike Lennon return, right? I think it's Mike Lennon returning. Oh, God, he sucks so bad. <laughs> Dude, I hope... Uh, so, Robert Quinn is about to beat Richard Dent's uh, sack record, and I hope he gets it on Mike Lennon. Uh, I know it doesn't mean anything, but whatever. I really hope that they lose, because I don't want any reason to bring back Mac Nagy at all. Any reason. Well, I hear, I hear, I hear. There's a seventy percent chance he's coming back. I hope to God, no. Let's, you know what? Let's talk about some positive football before we get into the Bears. But you know what else we can talk about? That yeah. New Year's coming up, and, and you know what? It, it we really are at the end of the year, and it's out with the old, in with the new, and 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 uh, you know that means. Getting rid of things that you don't need. And this episode is brought to you by our favorite producers of All Trimmers Manscaped. You know, they're the global leaders in below the waist grooming. And we're leaving 2021 with a new product. Yes, that's right. They are coming out with the ultimate 
premium body wash. Yes. Which we got a special offer. Use promo code TANK for 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com. Join the 4 million men that already you trust Manscaped. It's time to join. You know, 2022 is on its way. And you want to get rid of those unnecessary pubes that are just getting your way. So that's what, why we need Manscaped. You know, 2021 suck, and that's why Manscaped is making a splash and upping the grooming game with their signature lawnmower 4.0, and it's here to take down every pube that's in this pack. You know, get 20% off and free shipping with the code TANK at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with the free shipping at Manscaped.com. And use the code TANK. A happy new year to your balls. And as you watch the ball drop, Get smooth balls by going to <laughs> manscaped.com. Dude, what a, what a, I love that. Hell yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, not dropping the balls, though, how about your Miami Dolphins? You know, I, I, I mean, I mean, I've never had a thicker, big beard than this. Yep. It's, it, 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 I don't know what to do with it. You know, it, it's just everywhere. I think it looks good. I think you should keep it, but it's not up to me. It's up to the Dolphins, right? So what do yep. I What do I know? Yep. You know, uh, I, I mean, seven straight wins. It, 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 the first team ever to, to lose seven and then win seven this season. If the season ends today, they'd actually be in the playoffs. You know, it's not going to be easy the last two weeks. They got to go to Tennessee, and then they play the Patriots to end the season. I mean, who would have ever thought when they were one and seven that they'd be in this position? Absolutely not. They were in discussions for tanking. They were in discussions for trying to get Deshaun. There was Watson. no tanking. There was no tanking. The dirt pick goes to the Eagles. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, that's so good. Screw them. Even the Eagles are about to make the playoffs. That's that's crazy too. But yeah, the well, 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 Washington is 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 disintegrated. The NFC is just garbage. Uh, so there are the, uh, the Browns division. Which, which division is that? AFC South, right? Or AFC North? I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, the Cardinals. Uh, uh, the Cardinals just backed into the playoffs. They are just complete frauds. Uh, Kyler Murray. I mean, it, 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 I mean, too short. He he doesn't look like a good quarterback to me. You know, I think maybe it, maybe it's maybe it maybe it's because uh, it's uh, they've lost uh, Hopkins and uh, they hope he's back for the playoffs, but they have not been the same team since uh, Hopkins went down. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you lose your number one wide receiver, and DeAndre Hopkins is a dog. You know, like it's hard to replace somebody like that, especially when it's just what Christian Kirk out there and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray fumbles a lot. Yeah, he's got small hands. He's got a small body. Uh, he's fast. He's like a video game when he runs. But when you can't see over the lineman, how do you play quarterback position successfully? You know. Uh, so uh, I, I think I think the Rams are a threat to go to Super Bowl. I think the, the Buccaneers, of course. The Rams, uh, the Rams are if Matt Stafford doesn't shoot himself in the foot every other game. When it comes playoff time, he needs to step it up. The the Cowboys have the Cowboys look like if if they fire on all cylinders could be dangerous, and the Packers, of course. The yeah. rest of the the rest of that conference is garbage, mediocre. Even like all right, so the the most mediocre is has to be the. Uh, and I think this is going to be the most mediocre game of the week is uh, Browns Steelers. That's our Monday night game, but that's been the mo- most mediocre division in the league this year. Well, ever since uh, uh, the Dolphins game, Lamar Jackson it was almost like everyone said, "Son, we now know how to beat him. Let's do that." Right. <laughs> make him run east and west, and make him r- throw the ball deep. Do you make him throw the ball deep? There's only oh well I'm sorry, uh, make him throw the ball uh, short because he can only throw the ball deep and he can only run north and south. That's it. That's all he could do. 
I don't know. He's a good fourth quarter quarterback, but other than that, he looks more like a running back at times. So I don't know. I mean, the Bengals have uh, played well, but you know, they're so inconsistent. I can't trust them. For me, uh, I, I hate to say it, I gotta go with the Packers to win the Super Bowl. And you know how much that pains me. And the Green Bay Packers are the Super Bowl champions. And that Nagy has got a three-year extension. When yeah. you wish upon a star. You're going to make me cry on the podcast. I don't want to be doing that. I I just, it's uh, it's miserable. It's miserable. Tell me what the difference of, I mean, you might not know all about this, but tell me what the difference is of Matt Nagy and John Fox when there's nothing in their records and their divisions besides, yeah, maybe a little bit of the record, but there is well, nothing. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the Bears look like they use a, uh, use like a, uh, a one-page playbook. One side yeah, has he's got a whole Denny's menu, of, and you don't even know what it says on there. That's what pisses me off the most. I mean, everything they do, everything they do is just no, no creativity. No, no. And then they find reasons to blame everything. Uh, last week, we finally won, thank God. But like two weeks ago, it was like, oh, we didn't know our, our headsets were messed up. And, and then, hey, it's just the refs. And it's like, dude, you would, bad teams make excuses. And I feel like all they do every week is make an excuse. It's you know, the work. problem is... Uh, uh, Virginia M- D- McCaskey, she just, I, I, I don't know what, what's going on with the McCaskey family. Uh, they're so entrenched, but this just doesn't act, seem to be. They act like a mon pasha in a multi-billion dollar industry. That's the problem. If they stick to their old ways, they're so frail and fragile with their moves. And it's like, dude, just grow a pair. Bring in people, get some change. And like you were comparing it, you were comparing uh, Nagy to Louis Rojas. And it's like, we don't have that Steve Cohen to come in here and just be like, nah, screw this. You're out, you're out, you're out. We got to be, get be, 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 Yes, Louis Rojas was was a guy that was an instructional league manager. Yeah. And they say that if he, he has the potential to be a good manager, he just did, wasn't yeah. ready. And when it came to important decisions, it was like he had the script and he just, this is what it says to do in this situation. I'm not differentiating. Uh, I'm not differentiating by player. I'm just doing what the book says. I have no creativity. And then it, then it's always like, wow, that other team out there is so great. It's like, you're not a math book. This is not an analysis issue. It's These are players as well. And you got to, Everything is situational. It's it's not what the book says or how the book goes. Everything is situational. I'll never forget in September, the uh, Mets lost a game to the Cardinals. They lost it in 13 innings. And uh, he put it in a pitcher who, who had just been called up and hadn't pitched uh, in a major league game in two months. Yes, he didn't want to use a pitcher on back-to-back nights and three nights and four nights. And the Mets were still 500 at time. In fact, if they had won the game, they would have went back to 500. They lost that game. He says, well, why should I manage a team, a game in September differently than April? I don't want to blow out my pitcher's arms. And they basically won like one out of the next nine games. It was like the, it, that statement right there. Just like was like just, that was like the the, the 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 nail in the coffin. Right. It's just where he just doesn't understand it. It was like uh, when Jim Boylan was calling timeouts down twenty when uh, in in the fourth quarter, five minutes left, and you're gonna call a, no two minutes left, and you're gonna call a timeout. To teach your, teach your young players a, uh, a motivational lesson. It's like, dude, what is going on? I, I feel like a lot of coaches are just so in over their heads. They try to think so outside the box that everybody else can see it, but they think they have the only answer. And I feel like that's Louis Rojas, that's Matt Nagy, that's all these coaches that have failed consistently. Even Chip Kelly, remember that whole fiasco? Just certain coaches that just doesn't, 
like they think that they're smarter than all of us and they end up failing and getting fired just like the rest of them. It takes a certain special uh, coach to, you know, coach. And, then, and that's why there's only a few great coaches, right? So I know you're happy with your, uh, your new match general manager. Uh, I feel like things are finally turning around over there. And I think that you guys finally have uh, a shot. I mean, there's a lot more steps to make for the Mets, but do you feel a lot more confident this year than last year? Well, we'll see. I mean, I don't even know what's going on. Uh, well, uh, the, 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 this lockout is uh, supposedly, uh, it doesn't even look like uh, Manfred even cares if the sport gets played. <laughs> Manfred, why is he even a commissioner? Realistically, why doesn't he step down? Uh, he sucks. What is he doing? Like, I, I just can't. The second that he said that it's just a piece of metal, the trophy, is the second that he should have been forced to resign from being the commissioner of the MLB. You play the whole year to win the World Series championship. And you tell everybody that it's just a piece of metal. You're a scumbag, you know. That so what are you? That's for? that's that was the moment he lost all credibility to me. Right, that is same. It's like, dude, how can you say that you love the game? You you do all this, and then you don't even punish. I mean, you punish them, but not to the extent where people were happy with the Astros. And then, and then you go and just say it's just a piece of. Then what are you doing handing it at the end of the year? If it's just a piece of metal, what are they playing for then? You know, that doesn't make sense to me. What What is the Raptors? What is the whole celebration? If you're saying that it's just a piece of metal, then you're you're basically throwing the whole sport away, and you're dissing other sports. Where you're saying just the Lombardi Trophy is is just a piece of metal. You're saying that the O'Leary, uh, yeah, right, the O'Leary Trophy is just a piece of metal. It's not true. It It is true to a certain extent, but it's what you play the whole season for, what people break their ankles for, what uh, people get injured for is to get to this point to win that piece of metal. And this guy just talks about it like it's it's you could find it on the street. And it's just just scumbag. I don't know. Probably the worst man, the worst commissioner in all of sports, I would say. And a lot of the a lot of the uh, people who are commissioners now are terrible. You know, uh, I mean, we know what a prick Roger Goodell is, and Gary Bettman has no clue. But uh, and somehow, Parker is such a yes man that he just says, "Oh, anything you want, LeBron. Oh, anything you need. Anything that n- makes our uh, our sport." Just grow and grow and grow, and and we have to be amazing and this and that. And I just I don't like Adam Silver at all. There are a lot of people like him. A lot of people think that he's better than David Stern. I'm just not not a fan. I don't know. I can't grow on the guy. Looks like a lizard to me. He he looks like an alien. He look actually looks yeah. like he does. Like he looks legit like an alien. I don't trust anybody that looks like a lizard. I'm sorry. Kind of reminds me of the Mark Zuckerberg family. I put him in that in that category for sure. <laughs> That's all right, though. So what else we got here? Well, uh, the Nets are playing well. Uh, they uh, went in L.A., won both games against the uh, Clippers and the Lakers, especially yep. against the Lakers on... Uh, Christmas with uh, Russell Westbrook. Uh, me, 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 He's he's a stat patter, and finally people are catching on. And I saw an article by I think it was the LA Times where they're like, should we still let Russell Westbrook just be Russell Westbrook, and is stat padding okay? Like it's never been okay. That's why the guy has not won anything ever. I, I, I. Who in their right mind thought that Russell Westbrook going to LA would win a championship? Well, Especially I like the fact. Old team. I, I like the uh, my, the uh, Nick Claxton uh, 
putting LeBron on the poster. Oh yeah, I. Sheesh. You know what? And my favorite part about that is they're all what thirty five. What's the, what's the average age for the Lakers right now? Thirty five, thirty six. Yep, and Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> Just retire. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah. You know, you, you know what? You know, you know. I, I've never liked the Lakers. I never liked the Lakers, but they've never had a team that's just so, so just with players that you just I absolutely hate. Yeah, yeah. Melo, because well, you're a Nets fan, so you probably despise Melo. LeBron. Yeah. Everybody from the East Coast hates LeBron, or from the Eastern Conference, especially. Um, and Russell Westbrook is it? Russell Westbrook is it? Yeah, did. Well, Russell Westbrook is famous for in a game where he had uh, 14 points, 10 assists, and in, uh, nine rebounds, chucking up a shot at the end of the game on a fast break, hitting the rim, grabbing a rebound, and then dunking it home. Yeah, just, just so, so he could get triple double. Yeah, and there's a there's a, a compilation of him just you know stat padding as well. Just him just. All these little small clips of him. You, you know, uh, once upon a time, uh, everyone talked about uh, Oscar Robertson being the only player to average a triple double for the season, and now Russell Westbrook's done it a few times, and Russell Westbrook has basically ruined a triple double with his stat padding. But basically, it's like, it's cool. yeah, the no. Nah, nah. Right, where, it's cool. It's cool stuff where, 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 yeah, what he does is, uh, what he does is, he'll just like toss the ball to someone open, just so he can get the assist, even though he might have had the better shot. Right, and you know what? People will, people are like, oh well, you know that he, if you check his stats, he's won seventy percent of his games. Okay, that's fair, but what about the games that matter? What about the games that he's supposed to go, you know, deep in the playoffs to? Without he's, Kevin Durant, he's never he's, made it past he, the first round. He's been terrible in the playoffs. Yeah, he's awful. And I feel like this year, he's not even going to make the playoffs. Did you hear what he said about the Lakers? when they're, he's, they're like, he's like, if we win a ch- championship, cool. If not, that's cool, too. How could you even say that? You play, and The only guy, and I hate LeBron, okay, but I give him this credit. Uh, the only guy that is playing for a championship is the one that's the only one that's not acting like he doesn't need to. You know, everybody else has a lot to prove. LeBron's the only one that doesn't really have anything to prove. And LeBron's the only one playing hard out there. The guy's putting 35 points a night and losing every game. I think they're 1-11 in in their last 12 games. Yeah, Lakers Lakers are a little bit better than that. They're just hovering near 500, though. No, I think they're I think they're either one and twelve or uh, two and two and eleven in their last twelve games. Forgot this, what. Uh, this Lakers the Lakers right now are seventeen and eighteen on the season. They're Jeez. four and six in their last ten. Four and six in their last ten. Yeah, I don't know where I got my fucking stat. Oh my gosh, I feel like they've just been awful. I feel like they've been. Terrible. But but if the season ends today, they'll be in that uh, that playing round. So do you think that they're going to make the playoffs then? Oh, yeah. You think so? Yeah. Who's behind them? I think the, they have the the Grizzlies. Well, the, uh, right now, right now, uh, the, the, the six teams in the playoffs will be the Warriors, Suns, Jazz, Memphis, Nuggets, and uh, Clippers with the Lakers, Mavericks, Timberwolves, and Spurs in that play-in bracket. <sighs> Yeah, somehow the Spurs are always up there sneakily. Uh, they don't even really have a good team this year. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, you got some, you got a lot. Some the, the teams that are basically out of it already are the Rockets, the, the Thunder, the Pelicans. Zion Williamson. He hasn't played a game yet this year. Doesn't look like he wants to play a game. I think he's uh, too big uh, to be playing a game. Uh, I mean, the, New, New Orleans is where basically teams. Uh, I mean that that is just a, a festering boil of a franchise. The Blazers always get off to a slow start and finish hot, so yeah. they're there again. So expect them to make their run. Uh, and then 
the team that surprised me the most out of all those teams are definitely the Warriors. I did not think the Warriors were going to come out this hot this year. But Steph yeah, Curry is playing lights out. Well, yeah, we did. did, did you got the uh, there's uh, the, 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 right now the uh, the five best teams are the uh, the Warriors, the Suns, the Nets, the Jazz, and the Bulls, with the Bucks just hanging on the outer edge. The Bulls are the best team in the league. Let's talk about it. Uh, I think the Bulls the, I think are it, back. The Bulls are back, well, and they're the best. Well, the I think the Bulls are probably going to make it maybe the second round. Maybe the second round. I think I think they're going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Nets. I, I don't see a team beating them. Besides the Nets, who's going to beat them? Milwaukee. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're, the Milwaukee Bucks are the little brother of the Chicago Bulls. But keep in mind, they're the defending NBA champions. I don't care. And if the Bulls and uh, Bucks play each other in the second round, I hope it's a seven-game war with every game going to double overtime. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, but I still think the Bulls will come away. I feel like the Bulls finally have enough talent. The team that scares the, the the team that scares me a little bit is the Heat. I was gonna say Miami Heat scare me a lot. Jimmy Butler's a different animal in the playoffs. Yeah, the the, the Cleveland Cavaliers have actually played pretty good this year. Absolutely, but the I Celtics, feel like they're gonna be a the dud. Celtics. The, the Celtics look like a team that's dying. I don't like the Celtics at all this year. The you Knicks got yeah. Suck. Right now, you in the playoff bracket, you have the Hornets, the Wizards, the Knicks, and the Celtics. How are the Knicks even? What's their record? Fifteen and eighteen. They've and just 17? they won they won their dirt straight today, but they've oh, okay. basically they've basically have fattened up on some bad teams. the The Hawks haven't really exa- exactly got things going. The Timberwolves always suck, and today they played the Pistons, who. Or five and twenty-eight. You said the, the Timberwolves. Are, yeah, I thought the 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 Knicks played the Pistons. No, those are the last Knicks three the last three games. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. So the Knicks, the Knicks, the Knicks have a three-game winning streak, and they basically played uh, the Hawks, who are five, who are hovering under five hundred. The uh, the Timberwolves, who are hovering under five hundred, and the Pistons, who are terrible. Okay. So do you think um so you think the Nets will make it to the Eastern Conference Finals? They better. They better? Is it is it bust if they don't? It's bust if they don't go to the NBA Finals. And let me ask you this, is it do they trade Kyrie Irving by this by deadline? Uh no. They got they wanted him back, he's coming back. He's only going to play road games. That's fine. I think I think it's finally time that they're like, yeah, screw it, let them play some road games. But what's gonna happen? The- what's gonna happen eventually is, by the time the playoffs get around, that New York mandate's probably gonna be gone. Hopefully, you think so? Well, look, we're gonna go through another two cycles of the virus. We're gonna, yeah. uh, you know, why it's spiking? You know why it's spiking? Sure. It's winter! No. Yeah, literally. And people act so surprised, too. It's like, dude, have you guys not been around for, like, your whole life? When do you get sick the most? Winter? When it's cold out. Yeah. When does the flu? When does the flu surge? During winter, I would, I would, I would shoot for winter. Yeah. So naturally, the COVID, this Omicron variant, which is less virulent than other variants, and everyone, uh, what gets me is people who are going, who are asymptomatic, going to get tested. But what for? What for? What are you doing? You know, that's my thing. It's like. You just wake up and you're bored and you're like, oh, time to go get tested today. I hate getting tested. It is I, so. I, they, they, they have this. They you know? have this 
day of just driving testing. Yeah. And the line stretches a half a mile. It, and you and people pleasurably sit in there to get some fucking Q-tips rammed up their nose because it's an everyday thing for them. It, it, but literally, it, it, if, if you did, it, if if you and your whole family is vaccinated. And you don't have symptoms, you have zero reason. Right. To get right. tested. Right. But that's what do we do? that's why we got the vaccine. That is right. why. So if you do get it, it just Yeah, it's basically your you're bulletproof. And and my thing is is like the the only thing well, not the only thing, but one of the things I'm just so baffled by is the, all right, you want to come into a sports event? Fine. You have to be vaccinated. And that's a mandate. All right. You guys are vaccinated. All right. You guys also have to wear the mask. They Why? just keep. So they you just don't get keep. The, the, there might be somebody positive in here, but we all have the vaccine. They just well, keep. They just yeah. keep moving the, the goal line. And that's. And that's why nobody trusts what, what's being said. Exactly. Exactly. Because I think they don't even know. And they say, oh, well, things change every day. Things change every day. Well, yeah, then uh, just make up your fucking minds because it's it's getting annoying. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, my video is going to pop up, but you can still hear me. Uh, I am going to the script really quick. Oh, we definitely need to talk about, uh, speaking of deaths and all that stuff. Uh, John Madden. John Madden is a uh, sad day in football history for a football fan. So, rest in peace, John Madden. Uh, what was your best memory, I guess, of John Madden? Well, I just remember him doing uh, the football games on uh, CBS and Fox and then moving on to the uh, Sunday night games. For me, but, it has to be uh, the sleds. Do you remember where he, uh, where he, the Hard Knocks episode, where he like hopped on the sled, and he was like, my favorite part about uh, like when he used to coach was he was just sit, sitting on the sleds, and he goes hit, and he would blow the whistle, and every and all the players would hit the sleds and push him, and he was like, yeah, he's like, for a football player, it's a hundred degrees outside, they got to push this thing, it probably sucks, but for me, I get to stand here and be pushed in the breeze, I'll do it all day. <laughs> He always had a he always had a keen sense of humor, so it was. I like them. I love them. And uh, I mean, all the uh, he used to come out with those videos, Bing Bang Boom. Yep. What was funny is that he was he actually hated flying. Yeah, he uh, when he took a train to every game, and he wouldn't uh, go to the Pro Bowl because it was in Hawaii all the time. Yep, he wouldn't. Uh, the, he wouldn't fly after his career, after his coaching career ended, and uh, he took a train initially, and then he got the bus to sponsor him, and he came to the, uh, that became another thing, the Miami Cruiser. I mean, talk about a guy that, wow, well, I sound like Chris Collinsworth there. Here's a guy who, <laughs> but yeah, he's just a, he's a guy that got everybody into football. He wanted people to know about the sport, and. Uh, I mean that's that's kind of what makes him so legendary. He was yeah he was a stud. He was a Raiders coach. He was a great color personality. And then the video game. He just wanted people to know what it's like for football. And he's also the reason that we have better time management skills than half the coaches in the in the league right now. So, shout out Mike McCarthy. I used to like when he did the All Madden team. Yeah, the All Madden teams were awesome. Yeah, those were the best. And when he was on the covers, remember when he was on the cover, first cover yeah. where he was going through the wall like the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> so, rest in peace to a legend. Uh, yeah, that's sad. It's sad, but it's it, it has it happens. That's life. So now, uh, are they calling? I'm watching uh, the Alamo Bowl right now, Oregon and Oklahoma. I'm curious to see what this call is. Uh, looked like a face mask that uh, the receiver caught the ball. He ripped off his helmet, and he ran 50 yards for a touchdown. 
and uh, it looks like there's not counting the touchdown. And there's a flag, I guess, for face mask. Can they decline it and let him have a penalty? No, the play is whistled dead at the moment if the helmet comes off. Are you kidding me? That's bullshit. That is so soft. Yeah, he caught the ball. The guy ripped his face uh, ripped his face mask, but when he ripped the face mask, the helmet came off. And uh, the runner was the uh, guy that had no one in front of no, no one around him, and he went 50 yards for a touchdown. But the touchdown doesn't count. That's bullshit. That is so soft. Uh, I mean, there was nobody that could have tackled him. Once the guy pulled pulled his face mask and fell, he this guy like like he he made the catch. The Oregon defender grabbed his he- grabbed his helmet and fell with the helmet, and the guy just ran the rest of the way into the end zone. Well, that almost academic anyway. Oklahoma just got their ball down into the side of ten now, but. That that kind of that kind of sucks. Oh no, there's now they're going to pull holding. I guess. Are you kidding? That, that, that kind of sucks. It's the ref show. It's the ref show. That's how it always goes. Oh, and the referee, the referee, put the, the flag back in his pocket, waved it like this, and went. There's uh <laughs> this kid. The, the, that's the uh, I just saw the stat. It's the uh, second quarter, and there's been like uh, 17 flags already. <laughs> That's awful. What's wrong with you? Yeah. That's the rough show. That's how it goes when the lights but, are uh, on them. But but seriously, if you're, the, the guy, they took his helmet off, and and I know now they have that safety rule. But it but if there's nobody that can attack you, then they should they should give you the touchdown. Yeah, literally. That's so annoying. Whatever. Who Ooh. do you got going for this game? Who do you want to win? Uh, I think I took Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, you, this is the last show of the, uh, the new year. Or of that the it year. is. Um, do you have any new year's resolutions? Uh, I want to see more states, more different things. More states, more different things. Yeah, for me, I just, I need to get on the treadmill because I got a, a wedding diet. So I got to just lose some weight for my... For uh, for my wedding, and then after that, it's all gravy. I don't have to lose any more weight. <laughs> yep. Um, what else was I gonna say? So yeah, what was your probably what was your favorite thing in 2021 then? Just seeing nude places. Yeah, I feel like yeah, you like that a lot. I think that you should do yeah, hot dog reviews around the world, just seeing new places, exploring new places. What's the next new state that you want to see um, in 2022? Well, I don't know. I I thought I was going to see Arc Arizona. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think what would be a good one that you haven't seen. Uh, you've never been to California? Nope. San Diego is nice. San Diego is beautiful. I've been there. Um, it's great. Hawaii is awesome, but it's very far, and it's a nine, probably I think an 11 hour flight for you. It's nine for me, so it'll probably be eleven for you. And uh, yeah, Texas is beautiful. You definitely got to check out Texas. So those are just a couple. Um, but with that being said, oh, before we uh, transition to ask the tank, did you see the Giants PR getting into fights with the ex scouts on Twitter? <laughs> well, Saquon <laughs> Barkley wants to burn down Soldier Field too. What's his problem? What did we do to uh, what did we do to Saquon Barkley? He uh, tore his ACL last time he played there. Oh, well, I'm to come on down. Let's see. Uh, we kind of want well, to tear down Soldier Field too, so <laughs> we're in the same boat here. Well, yeah, and, and then they'll become the Arlington Park Bears because your mayor's a moron. Oh, come on! I I want him to go to Arlington because you know what. Where where do the uh, where do the Jets play? Uh, the Meadowlands. Yeah, where do the Giants play? Where do the Cowboys play? 
Cowboys Arlington. play in Arlington. Yeah, they're still the Dallas Cowboys. So where did the, um, where did the 49ers play? Uh far, right? I forgot where they played. Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Santa Clara. Exactly. Clara. Exactly. Exactly. This this is where exactly did the uh, where did the Rams and uh Chargers play? Not in LA, I can guarantee that. Inglewood. Oh, really? In Inglewood? Yes. See, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. She is a moron. She's all right. So, she's got to be the dumbest mayor I've ever witnessed in my life. And she's uh, every. And she just came out with uh, like uh, there's a text release that came out between her and the government governor, and she's like, "You're petty." And like this and that, and there's a whole text chain. I'm like, dude, this, all this lady does is just lie and and make stupid jokes. Like, and then she thinks Poli- she's funny on Twitter. Politicians suck, you know. Oh it, yeah. It, it, the, the Bears, the Bears deserve a stadium. And if you do build in Arlington Park, you should build an eighty thousand seat retractable roof stadium, so you could get uh, Final Fours every ten years. Well, Churchill Downs uh, owned the racetrack, okay? Churchill Downs also owns Bet Rivers. The Bears just linked with Bet Rivers, right? And then guess who just got the property? The Bears got the property to the old racetrack, which means that this is already a done deal. This is already in set, and I feel like the naming rights are going to be given to uh, the Bet Rivers, the casino. So I think it's going to be Bet Rivers Casino by when it's all said and done. Well, it doesn't matter who what the city name is. Put a fucking don't be like the Meadowlands. Put a fucking roof on it. Get a Super Bowl to Chicago. Yep. To get yep. get get, fi- get the Final Four to Chicago. You'll yeah, have concerts. You'll have concerts and go the, the the huge concerts. You can make that into like the the venue of the, the Midwest. Right. Right. And uh, she ruined it with any any little chance that she had, Lori Lightfoot, with uh, her stupid tweets and, like, focus on beating the Packers and just being better and this and that and you blah, 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 yep, yep, yep. You don't know anything you're talking about. And if you know what negotiation skills are, any little ones that you have are officially out the window with the Bears because— Soldier Field, Soldier Field, when they renovated it, they destroyed it. That was it. Still, like to me, I think that's the worst stadium in the NFL. It looks like a spaceship. It looks like a look spaceship. At, yeah, look! Look how the Packers preserved the look of Lambeau Absolutely. Field when they renovated it. Absolutely. The Bears Absolutely. failed. They didn't. They couldn't. Pres- it's almost like the Yankees calling Yankee Stadium Yankee Stadium after they did their renovation in the seventies. Yeah. Right. It was a different stadium. You know, Yankee Stadium post renovation looks more like pre renovation guaranteed rate field. Guaranteed rate field is, uh, you know, a guaranteed rate field is not that bad of a field, right? Not that bad. But, but the just... uh, Yankee Stadium after they renovated in the 70s looked like that. Oh, really? Minus the. Uh, See, in fact, when yet when when it first opened up as Comiskey Park, it was almost like a Yankee Stadium clone. Yeah, and then they re- renovated it and changed it up a little bit, spruced it up like in the last. Uh, no, the last ten years, the the new the uh, the, the renovations that happened like in the last five years took oh. away that old look. But look at a picture from Comiskey Park in 1990, and look at a picture of Yankee Stadium from 1990. They're, they're, they're very similar. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look. I, 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 I don't really know that much about it, but I gotta check it out more. Um, but it's just like do your due diligence when you're re- renovating a stadium. Uh, you could totally screw it up. I'm trying to think which uh, stadium screwed it up last. Uh, oh fuck, I don't remember. But somebody who just made a new stadium while well, all the other stadiums were going on, like the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Field, uh, SoFi Stadium is beautiful. So the Bears need to make something good. We can't have another. 
just regular old stadium. It, 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 and it's one of the smaller stadiums in the league, too, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? It's the smallest. It's the smallest. I, I mean, I was at Giants uh, the MetLife Stadium this week with Doug's the Jaguar game. Yeah. It's, it's an 82,000-seat stadium, and there were like uh, 20,000 people in there, and it looked empty. Yeah, that was, uh, that was awful. Well, who wants to go to a Jets game? A Jets-Jaguars game. Besides Doug's, who wants to go to a Jets-Jaguars game? Let me know. Like, realistically. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, that, that Doug's is the only person in, in Newark to be excited for a Jags Jets game, mm-hmm. gotta be. And it was as bad as advertised. Besides Ray Romano from Everybody Loves Raymond, nobody else besides Dougs and Ray are excited to see that game. Yeah, it it was uh, it was better than advertised, I guess you'd say. As bad as advertised. Oh bad, oh, dude. Wait, didn't didn't the Jaguars come back? No. Then, then Doug's uh, Doug's photo meant nothing. Where he's like, "LOL, they're cut. They're cheering it with nine minutes left. They still lost." <laughs> oh, Doug's, that's so funny. Um, you want to get into some ask the tank before we take off? Yes. Okay, let me uh, check the ask the tank really quick. The uh, Frank the Tank Pod went a little. Uh, a little brutal. There was a couple of people talking smack. I had to uh, I had to fire away at them. I gotta get through this. Here we are. Okay. We already went through this one. Asked the tank, does Frank have any New Year's resolutions? I already answered that one. This one was hilarious. I know it's got to be satire, <laughs> but it says. Frank, can you tell my wife to come home? She recently left me, and I know she listens to your show. Go home. <laughs> um, the next one. Who is your favorite current Mets player and favorite player of all time, and why? I'll have to go with Jacob DeGrom right now because he's the GOAT. And uh, maybe, Mike, maybe Mike Piazza will be my favorite. Okay. Uh, which Madden game was your favorite? You know, I don't really have video game systems. Uh, so when I was the uh, the last Madden game I had, uh, what was that, two thousand five ish, when uh, Donovan McNabb was on the cover. Okay. Oh, so that was. I had the yeah, I had the I had the computer version, the uh, the the the, uh, the CD ROM version. Okay. Nice. Um, the last CD game that I've had was uh, Backyard Backyard Baseball. That's my last CD game for a computer. Uh, and then the uh, the last one is any chance Frank goes down to Miami for the Pats Fins if the winner clinches a wild card? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, that'll be an exciting game. Well, the, uh, the, but that weekend I'm going to uh, Utica and Glens Falls for uh, minor league hockey. Oh, nice. That's fun. What made you want to do that? Uh, I got invited. It's two affiliates of the Devils, the Adirondack Thunder and the uh, Utica Comets. Okay, awesome. Hell yeah. That should be a fun time. But with that being said, Frank, do you want to uh, take us out on a song? Well, there's only one song to sing. Only one song. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? <coughs> Should old acquaintance be forgot in the days of old Lang Syne? I need some water. My throat is as dry <laughs> as the desert. For all I I need a cup of water now. Click like, subscribe, <coughs> and listen to Allow Me to Be Frank every week. See you in 2022. 
as there won't be any baseball because Mets are going to be good and Rob Manfred sucks. See you next week.